Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Today I'm going to be showing part 2 on how I built this 6 board or boarded chest with only hand tools. There's a lot to do so we'll jump right in. At the end of the first part of this build I was just finishing up the end boards and putting the notches in them that will accept the sides and now I'm going to mark out where the dados are going to go to hold the bottom in. Once I've established the location of the dados with the marking gauge, I'll come back with my knife and deepen the lines. Then I'll use the knife again to carve out a small shoulder that'll help me align my saw to make the cuts for the dados. I set the gauge to a quarter inch so that I can mark the end boards out with how deep I'm going to make the groove. Now with everything marked out, I can secure the end board to my bench with a hold fast and start to create the dado. I'll start creating the groove by using my carcass or crosscut saw to saw down each line that I created. Once the saw cuts are complete, I need to start hogging out the waste in the middle of the dado. To do this, I'll use the longest chisel that I have and a mallet and just start knocking out as much material as I can. On the first pass, I normally set the chisel about half the depth of the dado. And then I will remove material from the outside in on both sides so I don't splinter out any wood on the ends. Once I've chiseled away most of the waste, I'll come back with a router plane and clean up the dado and get it to its final depth. And just like working with the chisels, I'll use the router plane from the outside in towards the middle of the board so I don't split out or blow out any of the material on the ends. And once I've finished up the dado for the first end board, I'll repeat all the same steps for the second one. Once the dados are finished, I can start laying out for the OG or boot jack profile. I'll start by drawing a line on the outside of the end board that represents where the bottom of the dado is so that I don't go past that point. And then I'll mark out the center of the board and then just play around with some design until I come up with a profile that I like. To cut out the profiles, I'll gang the boards together and stick them in my moxin vise. I'll use my coping saw to make the cut, and I'll try to cut on the waste side of the line the best I can. The moxin vise really makes this process a lot faster and easier on my back. Being able to clamp the boards together or cut them both at the same time and not be hunched over when I do it has really been nice. I made this mock device a few months back and I uh, have a video for it. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description. Once I have the profiles cut out, I'll leave the boards clamped together and use a rasp to refine the shape of the profiles if I need to and remove all the saw marks. After I'm happy with the shape and the profile and I've removed most of the saw marks, I'll come in with a file and clean up most of the rasp marks. And then I'll come behind that with a card scraper and make sure all the profiles are nice and smooth. And that's pretty much it for the end boards for now, so I'll take them out of the clamps and set them aside for later. Next I'm going to start making the boards that will become the sides of the chest. The process for squaring these up and cutting them to length and width are pretty much the same as the end board, so I'll give the abbreviated version. I'll clamp the board in my workbench and use my low angle jack plane to square up one end of the board. I'll measure out the lengths I want the boards and I'll use a framing square to draw a line across. Then I'll take the boards over to the saw benches and cut them to length. Back at the workbench, I'll clean up all the saw marks and make sure the end of the board is square. Next, I'll use the end boards as a reference to figure out how wide I need to make the sides. I'll set the end boards up against the side panels and then mark off where I need to make the cut. I'll repeat the process for the other end and then draw a line between the two marks I made. I'll use my rip saw at the saw bench to cut the boards to the proper width. Once I've cut the board to width, I'll use my joiner plane to clean up all the saw marks and make sure I have a good straight edge. With a combination square, I'll check to make sure the edge is 90 degrees to the reference face all the way down the board. The side panels are going to have rabbits at the end that attach to the end boards. And to figure out how wide I need to make the rabbits, I'm going to measure out the thickness of the end boards and transfer that line over to the side boards. 
The rabbets are going to be a quarter inch deep, so I'll set the depth on the marking gauge and then scribe a line on the panels. Now I'm ready to start making the rabbets in the side panels, and I'm going to use two different methods to do this. Both methods involve me striking a knife line into the corners of the board so that I don't get any splintering during this process. The first method I wanted to show to create a rabbit is to use this rabbit plane from Veritas. It has a fence to set the width, a depth stop for obviously the depth, and once you make those two settings you can plane away the material that you need to create the shoulder. Once I get close to the line, I'll use my marking knife to scribe the shoulder line just a little bit deeper and then come in with my shoulder plane and clean everything up. The second method I'm going to do for creating these rabbits is to just use a shoulder plane and this is if you didn't have a fenced rabbit plane. I'll take my marking knife and I'll deepen the lines I created earlier when laying out where the rabbit's going to go. Then I'll use my marking knife again to carve in a slope and a shoulder that my shoulder plane will be able to ride in. Next I'll take my shoulder plane and tilt it inwards towards the shoulder that I just created. I'll take a few passes to establish the rabbit. And then once I've established the shoulder, I can take my plane and tilt it back to level and then start planing away the material down to the scribe lines I made. I'll use my combination square to make sure that the depth is right all the way down the board and that the width is correct as well. And then I can correct any little deviations with the shoulder plane. Both ways of making these rabbits work pretty well. I like using the rabbit plane with a fence on it because it's a little faster, but you could definitely get by with just the shoulder plane. You could even make this joint with just a chisel if you had to. I just thought I would show you two different ways that I use to make a rabbit. Once I've finished all the joinery on the side panels, I'll do a test fit between the end boards and side boards to determine how big to make the bottom panel. And once I figure out what the size needs to be, I'll perform all the same steps to get the board cut to size. With the end board side panels and bottom all cut to size and the joinery finished, I want to come in and clean up all the boards and get them ready for assembly. To do this, I'm going to use my number 4 smoothing plane set to take a really light pass and go over all of the boards. I want to pay close attention to what's going to be the inside of the blanket chest so that um, I don't have to worry about that after everything's assembled. And even on the outside of the board, since there's going to be nails that protrude out um, on the sideboards, it's going to be hard to plane or clean those up later, so I want to try to get as good a finish on these boards as I can now. Now I'm ready to start doing some assembly and I need the end panels to be up on their sides for this so I'll use these wood screws to hold them in place. Then I can install one of the side panels and then start laying out where I'm going to nail it to the end board. The nails require a pilot hole so I'll use my egg beater drill set up with a small drill bit to drill a little hole where each nail is going to go on both sides of the panel. I noticed here from the time I plane the boards flat to the time I'll go to put these nails in that the board developed a little bit of a bow, so I'm just using a clamp to hold everything tight until I get the nails in. For the nails, I'm using these cut hinge nails from Tremont. They're a cut nail, so they're wider in one direction than the other, and that requires them to be installed with the wide section uh, running with the grain, and this will keep the boards from splitting when you nail it in. I like using this rustic style fasteners on projects like this and with the swell in the middle of the nail body it causes it to have a bit more holding power than like a wire nail would have. Once I got one side nailed on, I'll flip the chest over and slide the bottom panel into place. I'll install the other side panel and temporarily clamp everything together. Then I'll make sure that the bottom panel fits in nice with no gaps, and I'll check everything for square. Once I'm happy with the dry fit, I'll drill all the pilot holes for the nails that'll go in this side. I'll remove the clamps, the side panel and the bottom panel, and then apply some glue in the data that the bottom panel sits in. 
I'm only applying glue to the dado section where the end board and the bottom boards come together because the grains are in the same direction and the board will move together with humidity and seasonal changes. Now I can slide the bottom into place, install the side panel, clamp everything back up, check it for square, and start nailing everything together. The end board and side panels get installed to the bottom with these fine finish nails from Tremont. I changed the type of nail because there's going to be a piece of molding at the bottom of the front of the chest and I don't want the nail heads to get in the way. I'll hammer in all the headless nails and then come back in with a nail set and punch them all below flush. I'll repeat the same process for both sides and both end boards. After I got the case all nailed up, the side panels overhung the end boards by just a little bit. So I grabbed my low angle jack plane and used my bench as a planing stop and shaved away the end grain until the side panels were flush with the ends. Then I used my saw benches to raise the case up. Still using my workbench as a planing stop, I grabbed my joiner plane and just flushed up the side panels with the top of the end boards. Now I'm ready to start working on the molding for the chest, and I'll start by planing the board down to the proper thickness. The stick of molding still had some blue paint left over from the lumber yard, so I'm just cutting enough material off so I can see some good end grain. I want to leave the piece oversized for now. The molding's going to be an overlow profile, and I need to start by taking my marking gauge and marking off where the two shoulders are going to be on either side of the molding. Next I need to draw in the quarter round profile on both sides, and I'm just going to use a socket for this. Then I'm going to clamp the board down to my bench, and use my shoulder plane to start planing away the material down to where the quarter round is going to start. I'll repeat that same rabbit process on the other side of the molding, and then I'll use my shoulder plane to create a chamfer down to where the quarter round is. I'm just trying to remove as much material as I can with this type of plane. With the bulk of the material removed, I can use my hollow plane just to refine the profile of the quarter round. Once I have the profile refined with the molding plane, I'll come back in with the shoulder plane and clean up all the edges. And that's all it takes to make a simple molding just using a couple of hand planes. Now I need to make a similar profiled round over quarter round on the top of the chest. I'll scribe a line on the top and the sides of the boards where I want the round over to start and end. I'll start by shaping the sides or the end grains on the top. And this way if I get any kind of blowout I can plane it away or get rid of it when I'm creating the molding uh, with the grain. I use my fenced router plane to create a small shoulder and then I'll use my shoulder plane to just clean up all the edges. I'll create a chamfer and remove as much waste material as I can with a block plane. I'll refine the round over with a number 6 hollow plane. I'll just change the angle of the plane and make a few passes uh, until I get a good profile. And then just like on the other molding, I'll come back in with a shoulder plane and clean up all the edges. I'll repeat all the same steps on the other side working the end grain first and then I'll come back and create the profile across the front uh, working with the grain. Once the profiles are all finished up, I'll use my smoothing plane to clean up the underside and top side of this board. I'll take real light shavings again making sure that this thing's ready for finish when I'm done. The profiles I made on the ends of the top came out really good except for there was a little bit of tear out so I cleaned all that up with some sandpaper. I'm using some cranked hinges that I picked up on Amazon for this chest and they're pretty inexpensive but they do need a little work before you use them. From the factory the hinges come like the one on the left where the two halves of the hinge don't sit parallel with each other or lay on top of each other. I'm going to fix these with my vise, and I'm doing this so that I don't have to create super deep mortises for the back of the lid to sit flush on the case. So I'll use my vise and an extra block of steel that I had to squeeze the two hinge halves together, and then that'll create the barrel to get a little wonky. So I'll take a hammer and I'll kind of bang all that back into place. And when I remove it from the vise, you can see how the two hinge halves sit parallel to each other. 
Ideally, I would find some nice strap hinges for this chest, but they're about 100 bucks, the ones I found. Uh, these hinges were about 10 bucks on Amazon and just took a couple of minutes to modify. I'll leave a link to these hinges in the description below, but for now I'm ready to start laying out their location on the case. I use my combination square to measure in from each side to figure out where I want to place the hinges, and then I'll come back with my marking knife and trace the hinges in the top of the backboard. Then I'll use the marking knife again to deepen the scribe lines I made. I'll scribe a line for the depth of the mortises with the marking gauge. I'll use a wide chisel to start removing waste up to the scribe lines that I made. I'll do that for both sides and it'll create a little dome in the middle and then I can come in and pare away that material with my chisel. I'll stay just above the line with my chisel and then I'll set my small router plane up to come take the rest of the material off and clean the bottom of the mortise out. When I test fitted the hinges into the mortises, I realized that the barrel was hitting the back of the case. So I took my marking knife and just removed a little bit of material so that everything would sit flush. The last step is to paint the hinges. They come unfinished and I thought black would be a fine color for it. So I just took some spray can paint and uh, threw a couple of coats on there and let it sit overnight. The next morning I test fit the hinges into the case and used a punch to mark out the screw locations. I screwed the hinges into the lid so that they would be secure enough to start working on the top. To align the hinges on the lid I set the case up next to the workbench and then propped the lid up on a couple of scrap blocks. Then I just moved the lid into place and then marked out where I want to put the screw holes for the hinges. I installed a couple of screws just to test fit the lid and make sure everything was open and closing properly. And then I could start laying out for where the battens on the lid are going to go. The battens are just two wood strips that run across the width of the top to hold the top flat. I'll start by marking out the batten placement on the underside of the lid. Since these wood strips are going to be visible every time you open the chest, I want to make them look somewhat decent. I don't want them to be just two simple blocks of wood. So I'm marking out and I'll start to create chamfers on the sides and ends of each batten. I'll create the chamfers on the side first and then mark the board in the middle, cut it in half to create the two battens out of one board. I'll chamfer the ends with a block plane. I didn't make any measurements on this, I just kept planing away until it looked good to my eye. The battens are going to be held to the lid with a couple of screws and I'm drilling the pilot holes for those now. The holes are going to be a little bit oversized so that the lid can expand and contract and not uh, pull hard on the screws and chance splitting apart. Now I can attach the battens to the lid. I'm not using any glue here, just screws. Next I need to cut the molding to size and I'll start by squaring up one edge with my shooting board. I'll take the molding and place it on the chest and then use my marking knife to scribe a line on where I need to make the cut. I'll cut the material off on the waist side of the line and then use the shooting board again just to clean up the end. I'll apply some glue to the back side of the molding and then attach it to the case. To hold the molding to the case while the glue dries, I'm going to be installing these fine finish nails. And then I'll come back in with my nail set and punch these nails below flush. Now I'm ready to apply some finish. I'll start by removing the lid and then applying some painter's tape to the underside of the top and to the inside of the case. I'm using General Finish's milk paint for this and the color is basil. I'll apply three coats, uh, wait in about three hours or so between each coat. Uh, this milk paint is awesome to use. I don't think it's a real milk paint, but it's made to look like milk paint and it, and it looks great when it's done and it's really easy to apply. I wasn't sold on the color at first, but the more I applied it, the, the second and third coat, I really like how it turned out and the green looks pretty good. After letting the paint dry overnight, I came back the next morning and reinstalled the hinges. I put the lid on and then I installed these eye hooks and this black chain to act as a lid stay or to keep the lid from opening too far. And that's it for this chest. It's all finished up. I'm really happy with how everything turned out and I liked uh, this was a not too challenging hand tool project and I had a lot of fun building it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did, give it a thumbs up. Definitely leave me a comment and subscribe to the channel. 
Thanks for watching.